Welcome, welcome, boys. Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to change the EGR valve on this 2002 Ford Crown Victoria P71 with the 4.6. So, first things first, you're going to take the engine cover off. That guy's got that little quarter inch drive that goes here. After that's off, I already went ahead and took this bracket off. There are two 10 millimeter bolts that hold it on. One bolt there, one bolt there. You just move these lines, cables, I guess rather, for the cruise control and the throttle. Slip them out of the thing that holds them in the bracket, pull the bracket out. Disconnect this vacuum line, and this dude right here that threads into the actual EGR here. Um, I'm gonna guess this thing's a 27 mil or whatever the U, uh, the English equivalent to that is uh, because my 26 almost fits but not quite so I'm guessing it's a 27 but that's what this massive adjustable wrench will come in handy for so grab your map gas heat her up and or soak with penetrating fluid whichever your fancy is and then put your wrench on there bust this loose you will be rotating it in a counterclockwise direction that will is similar to kind of like a brake line where this has a flange on the end of it and this kind of threads over it seals it up and it goes into this valve i'm getting a code for uh low flow so it's possible the egr valve actually isn't bad and that this tube is just plugged up so we're gonna pull this thing off see if it can be salvaged and cleaned if it can hold vacuum if so, we'll just clean it out and reuse it. If not, we'll go to the scrapyard and take another one of these things and call it a boom done. All right, so after we break this thing loose, which we have, I'll go ahead and take these things out, and then we'll thread that out the rest of the way. These look to also be two 10 mils, so zip them off, and our EGR valve will be free. Okay, and this is it with it off. Two 10 millimeters come right out, and then that's how that goes. So once this is back you can just kind of pull it loose a little and then your EGR will come off now I don't see anything clogged now remember well never mind well I don't know what order of videos these are coming out but I just sprayed an entire can of carb cleaner down into the throttle so it's possible maybe I dislodged some stuff and I got stuck in the EGR and maybe that's causing a low flow maybe it clogged up this tube but the tube itself doesn't look plugged up either so I sprayed a little bit of brake clean in there and there so hopefully it doesn't mess things up too bad we'll let it evaporate for a while before we start the engine and uh, we're going to clean out the inside of the EGR. I'm still going to go to the scrapyard and pick up another EGR just in case the valve is bad. But we're going to attempt cleaning it. And then uh, once it gets dried out and everything, we'll put it back on. Okay, now we can see in there. Okay, so if you look in the little part here, the bolts to the intake, where the gasket is, I've got my device hooked up. I did have some vacuum tube laying around. It took me a minute to find it, but there it is. So now we can convert, boom, to that, to here. Okay, so we have no pressure, no vacuum, rather, going to this yet. So, I believe that's all the pressure it can take. Yeah, it doesn't move up any more than that. So I'm not sure if it's supposed to or not, but that's as far as it moves. And we're at about 14 um, inches of mercury vacuum, I believe, is what we're measuring there. So what's supposed to happen is when this valve opens, when there's vacuum applied, which is there's a solenoid in the car that does that, Pulls vacuum up on the diaphragm that lifts that up and lets the exhaust gas go up and into the intake And then it goes back down whenever uh, that's blocked off so Not sure if it's good enough to reuse I mean it holds a vacuum and it eventually you know, I'm not sure how strong the engine vacuum is compared to this pump and or my lungs. So my lungs can do this too, but. So we're going to reuse it now that it's.
clean. And we'll see what happens. If Coke comes back on, then I'll just junk it and get a new EGR valve. Okay, we got our EGR back on. This is the original one. And I went ahead and anti-seized the two tens that bolt to the intake manifold. I went ahead and anti-seized all these threads, threaded her in there, and we're only on hand tight, I believe. Uh, it looks like it goes just as far hand tight as it did before, but I anti seize it up because who knows that may have fixed it. And I won't have to take it off for a long time, but if it didn't, it'll be fairly easy to get back off later again. Also, so either way, that's fine. A little bit of anti seize won't break the bank. And now we can put the bracket back on. You'll see how that went before I mess with it, and then uh, we're done for the EGR for now. Code comes back, we'll just put a new one in. If it doesn't, we're done. And that's our bracket back on, so as you can see with it over there, it makes it impossible for you to get to that flange that holds the EGR tube in place. So, the 10 there, the 10... Wow, well, it's... there it is, you can see the nut there. The bolt. Top of the bolt right there to the left, middle. And then, of course, the cables kind of... Snap right there. They just kind of clip in place. So that's it. Okay, so the code came back. So obviously the EGR is not the problem. And if you want to test this further, really, you can apply a vacuum to this, and this engine should stumble or stutter or stall. Okay, so that seems to check out. Here is the solenoid. I took the cap off. And if you... So if we put that back on, and then we restrict airflow here. Essentially has the same effect. So that implies the solenoid itself is also good. And that these hoses are good. So I'm going to assume the problem doesn't lie with the solenoid or the EGR valve. The problem pressure switch or pressure sensor, I guess, is well, maybe a generic term for it. It could be, uh, I believe it's going to be this thing right here that I can't get to. This thing I can't really see the where this gray connector is. And then, uh... I'm not sure how it's affixed here exactly. I think I can just pull it free from those hoses, but it may be affixed to something. No, it just moves around. Alright, so I'm pretty sure this part right here is the culprit. <clears throat> so let's get a new pressure switch. And then, uh, try that and see if we can get that code to stay away. Okay, so after a quick advanced auto parts run, we have, fruit of our labor, this thing, the pressure sensor. High and ref, whatever, a three-prong connector. And here's the electrical connector that I unplugged already. Just press down and pull, easy enough. And those hoses are probably going to be like on there pretty good, so I did spray with a little bit of WD-40 to kind of get in there around the hose. So as we look, we have a considerable distance to pull the hose off, so we'll have to twist and pull. And once we get them off, put the new one in, check the code, clear it, and then hopefully that'll be the end of our stupid EGR code that came out of nowhere, keeping me from getting this thing inspected, passed, and licensed. Alright, so I got the new one in. Bam. Put the old one back in the box. Um, here's how I found you want to do this. Okay, so... I would either get a pick or a small pry tool. Something like that. And then get in here and then kind of Pull the hose away, spray some WD-40 in, in there, 
and then kind of do the same thing, kind of work it to let the WD-40 get down by where the the hose is now attached to this plastic thing. And after you unclip the electrical connector, just kind of twist and pull. Rotate back and forth and pull, back and forth and pull, and then pops right up. And you just put the new one in. New one is a different design slightly. It's bigger than this. Now I'm sure if that's because it's aftermarket or Ford redesigned it or whatever, but it's a little wider. But the electrical connector does attach, and the hoses do stay secured on there. So that's good enough for me. We'll go ahead and clear the code. We'll scan the code, make sure that's what the code was, clear it. And then uh, that should be that should be it. If not, then I guess we're replacing the solenoid. But the solenoid, I think, is good. The valve is now cleaned, so it should be good. And then that other part, the suspect part, has been replaced. So should be golden now.